It is rightly said that obesity is the termite of our body. And like Alibaba and his 40 thieves gang, obesity is never alone. Metabolic syndrome induced by obesity is a gang of 40 plus diseases. This is just an incomplete list of diseases induced by or associated with obesity. Some of which are induced by hormonal imbalance which is biochemical or many of them are induced by pressure effects which are physical. The first and the foremost is dyslipidemia which is imbalance of lipids or very high levels of lipids which makes the blood highly viscous and not easily flowable and as a result of which body tries to retain water and sodium to keep the blood fluidish and uh, diluted and ultimately the water and sodium retention and a very thick blood due to high levels of lipid leads to hypertension or high blood pressure. Increased cholesterol and high triglyceride level increases blood viscosity which increases renin and angiotensin and aldosterone hormones in the blood which is known as RAS stimulation RAAS is renin angiotensin uh, tension aldosterone uh, system stimulation which leads to hypertension. Increased amount of abdominal fat leads to a direct compression of kidneys and when the kidneys are compressed it leads to hypertension. In this MRI we can see that the normal person's liver is uh, small in size and there is no congestion in the abdomen whereas in case of, of an obese person the liver has become so enlarged because of so much of fat deposition in the liver itself that it is compressing on the kidney especially on the right kidney and this compression on the kidney leads to activation of renin angiotensin and aldosterone system which leads to hypertension. Normal person's blood pressure is 120 over 80. If the blood pressure is elevated from uh, 120 to 129 and less than 80, it is known as elevated blood pressure. But when the, high, when the blood pressure goes 130 over 90 or more, it is known as stage 1 or stage 2 high blood pressure or hypertension. And when the blood pressure goes above 180 systolic and 120 diastolic, it becomes a hypertensive crisis and the patient must immediately consult MD physician. Abnormally high lipids in the blood eventually starts getting deposited in the liver cells and hence it leads to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease which is very similar to alcoholic fatty liver disease. Parallel to fatty liver disease, obesity also leads to fatty pancreas disease. There is also a direct compression of the pancreas and pancreas is the organ which secretes insulin and which regulates our blood sugar. Thus the obesity leads to dyslipidemia and dyslipidemia leads to diabetes and hypertension. Diabetes and hypertension are known as double devils because they are really the vicious twins. Obesity induced diabetes and hypertension are quite similar to the hypertension induced during pregnancy and gestational diabetes induced during pregnancy because of the direct compression on kidneys and on pancreas. During pregnancy, in the late stages of pregnancy, there are many women who develop hypertension and diabetes and the moment the delivery is, uh, is done, uh, usually the hypertension and the pregnancy because the compression is now gone both these diseases get reversed. Similarly if we reverse obesity when the obesity is gone the compression is gone and both these diseases are reversible without medications. Persistently and perpetually high insulin level as well as high lipid levels in the blood leads to hypertension and type 2 diabetes because persistently high insulin levels lead to insulation of the cells so that the cells do not respond to insulin for transport of glucose. Glycated cholesterol or glucose laden cholesterol ultimately leads to formation of uh, uh, plaques in the artery and this leads to narrowing of the coronary arteries and other arteries 
which ultimately leads to a uh, stroke which is known as i mean heart stroke which, which is known as heart attack or myocardial infarction in the same way plaque formation in the blood vessels in the brain can lead to brain stroke also there are two types of brain strokes one brain stroke is known as ischemic stroke where the blood vessel gets blocked and clogged and then there is another type of uh, stroke which is known as hemorrhagic stroke so when the blood vessels get blocked the blood is still flowing from behind and the block vessel does not allow the blood to flow further so there is a higher pressure created in in the area before the block block which can sometimes lead to a rupture of the artery and that leads to hemorrhagic stroke these are another pictograms to understand the difference between ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke the cartel of 40 plus diseases which come with obesity are known this entire complex is known as metabolic syndrome of all these gangsters of obesity gang diabetes type 2 diabetes mellitus hypertension atherosclerosis and cardiovascular and brain stroke disease are the most common obesity also predisposes the patients to increased risk and higher chance of developing 11 types of cancers especially esophageal liver cancer kidney stomach colorectal and advanced prostate cancer in men as well as breast cancer and ovarian cancer in women obesity also leads to early senile dementia because the thickened blood and narrowed blood vessels leads to a reduction in the perfusion of the brain because the brain in erect posture is the last organ to receive blood because brain is the topmost and the heart has to pump blood against the gravity and especially for the frontal lobe the uh, frontal area of the brain as well as the parietal uh, and the apical area of the brain receives the blood blood flow which is the last blood so any narrowing of the blood vessels or any thickened blood because of the high lipids lead to a, leads to a slow down and decrease circulation for the topmost portion of the brain and that topmost portion is our intelligence is our memory and is our cognition because that topmost portion of the brain makes us different from the other animals when we are awake our blood is the last organ to receive the fresh blood from heart and that's the reason why we need to lie down we need to sleep horizontally for 8 hours every day in order that the blood receives good blood in the horizontal position and he as we can see here in this mri that the obese person's brain eventually leads to shrinkage which is known as cerebral atrophy and you can visually compare here the obese person's brain after 20 years and a normal person's brain at the same age in this flash mri we can see that a normal person has a much higher perfusion of blood in in the central area and the peripheral area compared to an obese person in the medical field there is a proverb or a dictum which speaks that bigger the belly smaller the brain because of this disturbed and slowed slowed down blood circulation to the brain alzheimer disease is very very common in obese persons in obese persons there is a very high chance of deposition of tau proteins which forms amyloid plaques in the brain which leads to alzheimer's disease various types of hernias are very common or more common in obese persons because of the pressure effect because of obesity's pressure effect hemorrhoids which are known as haras or massa or sometimes we call it bagander is also more common in obese persons quite often hydrocele is also due to the pressure effect of obesity sciatic nerve compression and lumbar spine disc prolapse is also very common because obesity is like carrying 8 to 10 kilograms around the waist like a pregnant lady early cataracts because of type 2 diabetes is more commonly associated with obesity 
diabetic and hypertensive retinopathies with bleedings in eye in retina are more common in obese persons. Uterine prolapse as well as pelvic floor organ prolapse are more common in obese women. Polycystic ovarian disease is also very common in obese women. Because of upward pressure effect, gastric reflux and acid peptic disease is also more common in obese persons. Baldness, gynecomastia, which is big breasts in males, and male pseudo-pregnancy look is always associated with obesity. Increased level of insulin leads to increased white adipose tissue or white, white fat which leads to obesity, which leads to decrease in testosterone and which leads to increase in dihydroxytestosterone. And this dihydroxytestosterone is the hormone responsible for baldness in male and hair loss in women. Because of gross hormonal imbalance, acne is also very common in obese uh, persons. And these type of skin tags are also more common in obese persons. Obese persons have a permanent, persistent and perpetual compression of the third or the lowest lobe of their lungs as a, as a result of which it is very difficult for them, for them to take deep breath. And in sleeping position, the visceral fat, which is about 15 to 30 kilograms in their stomach, by gravity comes to compress on the diaphragm, which leads to compression on the lungs. Hence, the lung volume is reduced, which leads to a disease known as obstructive, obstructive sleep apnea which is also the cause for hypoventilation syndrome and as we know that because of this hypoventilation syndrome during COVID time the maximum that de maximum deaths occurred in persons who were obese having type 2 diabetes and having hypertension. 90% of our weight is above the knee joint and in obese persons this weight is aggravated by 20 to 30 kilo so there is a direct mechanical pressure on the knee joint and also uh, there is a uh, there is a direct compression on the knee joint as well as there is a chronic inflammation and there is too much of uh, uric acid deposited so that there is a mechanical compression as well as there is a corrosion of the joint and hence obese persons uh, have very common knee joint disease and if if we look at the statistics most uh, knee joint operations, knee joint replacement surgeries are to be done for obese persons. Mechanical overload and rusting of the joints due to uric acid is just similar to the uh, rusting of the joints and the mechanical wear and tear of the joints in our vehicles. Thyroid hormone disorder is also much more common in overweight and obese persons because our thyroid gland always secretes a hormone known as T3 and this T3 is activated in liver to T4. So T4 is the active form of uh, thyroid hormone, T3 is the inactive or precursor form of thyroid hormone and this conversion from uh, T3 T3 to T4 takes place uh, almost always in uh, liver and the fatty liver and the adipose tissue does not allow the proper activation from T3 to T4 and this is the reason that uh, most obese persons in spite of having a normal thyroid and normal T3 secretion they are lacking in T4 the active form of thyroid hormone this leads to hypothyroidism and when the T4 hormone is uh, less available in blood, in active form, the fat burning stops. So uh, obesity leads to decreased T4 hormone and decreased T4 hormone leads to further deposition of fat and increase in obesity. So this eventually becomes a vicious cycle. Obesity leads to decreased uh, blood circulation to the frontal lobe of brain and hence there is a depression or there is an up and down of uh, blue mood and good mood 
and whenever the person is in blue mood he wants to eat that's a normal uh, natural human reflex and when he wants to eat i mean when he keeps on eating more and more the blood becomes more and more thick so obesity leads to excessive hunger and excessive hunger leads to uh, mood disturbance and mood disturbance ultimately again leads to excessive hunger and this also becomes a vicious circle and when this decrease uh, or swinging or swinging of the mood becomes too much or when it becomes pathological it is known as depression so depression is also more common in obese persons obesity is also associated with a disease known as leaky gut syndrome and this leaky gut syndrome is very important to be understood which will be understanding more in details in a dedicated chapter about leaky gut syndrome because unless and until we can reverse the leaky gut syndrome it is impossible to reverse obesity because leaky gut syndrome leads to obesity and obesity leads to further enhancement of leaky gut syndrome so this vicious cycle also has to be broken because of the direct deposition of fat around the intestine in the obese person's uh, stomach they are more prone to crohn's disease and irritable bowel syndrome these type of spider veins in the lower extremity lower limb is more common in obese persons because of the hormonal effect as well as because of the mechanical pressure effect from above chronic edema of the feet as well as varico varicose veins are also more common in grossly obese persons especially in the later stage of their life quite often more so in the western world obesity leads to marital disharmony because if one partner is obese and the other partner is healthy and fit the healthy partner starts to dislike the obese person's look as well as obese person's swinging moods and hence this leads to marital disharmony and in the western world obesity is one of the most common reason uh, for uh, divorces if we ponder on the cause of obesity loss of quality of life is invaluable but medical cause uh, is around 25000 to 1 lakh rupees per year just for the treatments medicines and blood tests surgical costs are 3 to 5 lakhs once or twice or thrice uh, in the lifetime for uh, bypass or for various other surgeries needed it is estimated by government of india that 8% of the income of a family head goes for food or whole for the whole family of 5 to 6 persons which is about 2% per person whereas if one person becomes obese and has uh, any one or two of the associated diseases 22% of the income goes for disease treatment of that one person and imagine if two persons in a family of five or six are obese and having type 2 diabetes and hypertension almost half of the income will go for the treatment for the surgeries and for the blood tests and doctors frequent visits so obesity is also a very very expensive disease obesity leads to so many diseases that in medical field it is known as mother of all diseases which are life threatening or life shortening so from longevity point of view from healthy life point of view as well as from financial burden saving from the family from that point of view also we should always always think of reversing obesity or preventing obesity for a healthy society and healthy families there are two ways of reversing obesity one is bariatric surgery and the other is medical bariatrics bariatric surgery is a type of surgery in which the surgeons they modify the stomach and the intestine in such a way that even if a person eats lot of food very frequently without any control the intestine and the stomach will not absorb the food and as a result of which the person will start losing the weight and the obesity will start getting reversed but bariatric surgeries are quite expensive costing around 6 to 7 lakhs of rupees and obesity comes back after 3 to 4 years if the food intake of the person is not controlled even after bariatric surgery our stomach is made up of smooth muscles like uterus so like a like a gravid or like a pregnant woman's uterus increases in size from a fist size to almost the size of a bucket to hold 
about three and a half liters of fluid and three kilos of child. Or sometimes in twin pregnancy, there are seven kilograms of two children and uh, the fluid is around four liters. So, uh, as soon as the delivery occurs, within three, four days or five days time, the uterus goes back to the original size of small fist. So, the same way if we want our willpower, by our willpower and by control of uh, food intake and understanding what food will contract the uterus, uh, what will contract our uh, stomach, we can definitely reduce the size of our stomach reduce our hunger and reverse the obesity without any surgery just by correct understanding and just by a little bit of willpower so in our next sunday's seminar we are going to learn on the slim method and in which we will learn how to reverse obesity at almost zero cost we will also ponder on the question why obesity occurs most commonly in white collar job persons uh, in middle class or upper, upper middle class uh, Indians. Why is it, why obesity is more common after the age of uh, 35? Why obesity is not seen in some people in spite of eating lots of food? And which are the 22 hormones uh, of obesity? which can increase obesity or which can decrease obesity. Unless we understand these 22 hormones, we cannot actually grasp the key how to increase or decrease uh, obesity. But before we meet in the seminar, please uh, work out your target ideal weight. And your target, I target ideal weight is 21, which is the body mass index, ideal body mass index. So 21 multiplied by height in meters multiplied again by height in meters, that is the square of height in meters. So that should be the target weight. For example, my height is 1.65 meters. So my target weight is 21 multiplied by 1.65 multiplied by 1.65, that is 57.2. Now let us say if I am 70 kg, uh, that is my current weight and then my ideal weight is 57.2, that means I should be losing 12.8 kilograms of weight and we don't want to lose more than 100 grams per day because if we lose more than 100 grams per day uh, then the sudden loss of uh, weight will uh, lead to sagging in the skin and wrinkling in the skin so we want to maintain the youthful skin uh, look without wrinkles and yet lose the weight so the ideal weight loss per day is 100 grams per day so for losing 12.8 kilograms uh, per day at the rate of 100 grams per day it will i will need about 120 days to lose that so you please calculate your target ideal weight uh, and uh, when we meet in the seminar we will have a complete and clear guidance how to lose weight at a rate of 100 grams per day and unless we understand the hormonal basis of obesity, the 22 hormones which can either increase or decrease obesity, we cannot reverse it. it this is very essential. So in the next seminar, we will start from this chapter, understanding the hormonal base of obesity and then onwards we will go on for a discussion for next three to four hours. So please take a good rest, good sleep, be fresh in the mind and uh, Please avoid going to any parties or uh, any weddings. Don't come back home on uh, Saturday very late. Take a good early sleep and let us be fresh and meet on Sunday morning the 12th of uh, March at Meghani Mini Auditorium. You are all welcome and see you all soon. Thank you very much.